I want to talk about um, the dryness or the importance of drying well before any firing, either it's a bisque or a glaze. Um, glaze, you can make a piece and not glaze, so that will go straight into a glaze firing. Even that, you have to really dry well. Um, so you ideally want piece to be bone dry before it gets into uh, the kiln. And that is very, very fundamental and very critical in a sense that it, will, it has a chance of cracking if there is still moisture left in the kiln uh, before it's firing. So this is why a lot of potters and a lot of teachers who teach ceramics will always say, is it dry? Is it bone dry? But there are moments where, you know, I have to finish my work quickly and I rush a little bit with, um, with a drying process. There are ways of mitigating that, which I will talk about later in the candling program. Um, so I want to talk about, you know, a little bit about different forms so uh, most pots are open so they're kind of easy to see the whole piece when it's dry because you can see it you can touch it whereas the closed forms are a lot trickier to check um, whether they're fully fully dried and also there is this danger of uh, air being trapped in a closed form so there are two there are two aspects of um, aspects to this in a sense that there is a school where they say you must have a hole for any air left or moisture left in the piece to escape before um, it's fired otherwise it's uh, it's going to explode or crack and there's another side who says it doesn't really matter it really matters how well it's dried that the the closed form is not the matter of its explosion. So it's more to do with the dryness of the flat, of the piece. So for me, I've tried both in my own work with closed forms. Actually, some of it accidentally for not actually putting the hole in because I forgot. And then also when I have remembered, I've also put holes in the closed forms, which neither of them have uh, results in any explosion. So I think for me, by experience, I think it's really down to how it's, how it's dried. Uh, but I will still leave the two debates, you know, out there. So I want to show you how to identify um, bone dry pieces. So if you see here, you can see initially by looking. So this obviously is very wet and this is i think this is bone dry so you can in initially you can just see it by looking at the piece and if it's a clay you use all the time you can tell straight away whether it's bone dry or it needs a little bit more drying but if in doubt you can always uh, touch touch test by you know this is obviously wet this one feels it's actually student work, not my own work. It feels dry and a um, long time ago a technician at another studio told me you put it on your cheeks, if it feels cold then it's not dry, it's not bone dry. But it's very difficult when it comes to winter because every piece, even if it's dried, will feel cold because of the cold air in the studio. This one, I said it looks bone dry but I think feeling it, it might actually need maybe a couple more days Today, London is about 15 degrees, so maybe two more days to fully, fully dry. So some pieces you will, when you, the moment you touch it, you know that they're bone dry because there is no kind of hint of moisture left in the piece. But as I said, winter times it's a lot trickier. So, so by ways of getting around that maybe, I don't know, 10% under 10% left in the piece you are not sure but you need to really bisque fire for the glazing to hit a deadline there are ways of um, getting around this by uh, one is um, a candling program which is a bisque program 
that you run it um, over a long period. So this is my current candling program. So basically you take it up really slow up to 100 and I, it's a two hours hold and you can see that the vent holes are open and I shut all my vent holes around 400 degrees. So from 400 onwards, my vents are shut and um, this way you can kind of get away um, putting pieces that are slightly under, but this should still feel mostly dried. It's that little doubt you have and also pieces where you think mm, this is quite a thick piece, it's a big piece and I know it's fully dried but you want to be ultimately, ultimately sure you can run a candling program, um, a bisque program to ensure that it has that time, that two hours hole when the vents are open that any moisture left in the piece will escape. And also the other um, one I have learned from a potter I used to work for she does what's called a toasting uh, firing because her pieces were often very big. It takes months to dry and even then she's in doubt. Then uh, she does a toasting for about, I think it's often ranges from 50 degrees to 100 degrees. She leaves the, I think, kiln on slightly ajar the lid and she would put that program on for 24 hours before she actually runs her bisque. So there's another way of uh, trying to fully dry uh, pieces or further dry after bone dry pieces are big to ensure that there is no moisture pieces left in the deep down in the piece and if it's the, the more elaborate the piece gets the higher risk that you are going to find pits parts that are not going to be fully bone dry before your biscuits so by these two uh, methods you can fully uh, try to um, make the pieces bone dry and make sure they don't crack or explode during the bisque firing process. And I have to thank this uh, little video uh, to a um, uh, someone who watched my video, Stephanie, because uh, this sparked from the discussions through comments we had that uh, I thought maybe it's also interesting to address the drying process which is often can be overlooked it's taken for granted but there are a lot of little subtleties that we need to get it right for a good successful firing thank you